everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost. And what do we got here? This is handmade book cloth. Yes, this is paper and cloth. And what you can use this for is to wrap a book or wrap a file folder or, you know, make a notebook out of. It makes great covers. It, the nice benefit about using something like this where we have literally collaged paper onto fabric okay, is that the fabric gives strength and structure to this little guy. Um, this guy's not so little. I made a big one just to show you, but uh, it's also a great way to use up scraps and, and it also gives you a virtually waterproof surface. Um, so, and it, so if, you know, people are eating a lot of greasy finger chips and just having to go through your journal at the same time, it will be water protected. This would make a nice, um, a uh, piece of uh, book cloth for let's say a grocery list or something that you're going to be using a lot that's coming in and out of a purse or you could even make things out of this like you could make heck you could make a purse wouldn't that be cute I mean how cute would that be folders things like that but um, a very fun thing to try and and very versatile in so many ways and the great thing is it's darn easy to make hey isn't that great we love that okay so let me give you a little closer up look so you can see the prototype but basically i'm drowning in um i am drowning in scraps i don't know about you but if you're drowning in scraps and you might have a little piece of material hanging around that you might like to do this with and you got a little mod podge you pretty much have everything that you need um okay so let's give this a go it's pretty easy and if we have time um i'm going to actually show you how to make something with this or if not we'll do that on the next video let's just see how long this all goes um all right so this is exactly what i did and this is um we'll just put this aside for now oh sunny he's doing okay he is um we are making major progress today if anybody doesn't know he had um a little surgery yes yesterday the uh um uh, and he is recovering very nicely and he's resting and he did some walking today and he did his business outside and so things are functioning we're very happy about that and uh, so he's good and maybe maybe he'll uh he's resting right now we just let him rest right now okay <laughs> no promises all right so what are we going to do we need to cover our surface with something and what i used was uh, something that the glue is not going to stick to or not stick to too much. I used wax paper. Um, I find it a great substance to work with. You could use a shower curtain, um, you know, cardboard. doesn't matter. Anything will work. You just don't want to get your, your nice work surface all mucked up. Um, so I just grabbed a couple of these. I just realized what I'm missing. I'm missing my material. Okay, I will get it. You will never know. I, I disappeared and I came back. All right. And the next thing you need, voila, is a piece of material. I will be right back. Okay, I am right back with my piece of fabric from the fabric hoard that lives in my garage. I don't know, I'm apparently turning French today for some reason. Sorry, sorry for the bad accent. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, so just pick something bigger than what you think you're going to need it for. Um, probably a couple inches either way will be good. And if you do a little bit bigger than that, you might have some extra pieces to play with for something else. What I recommend is using something relatively thin and non-stretchy. I'm only saying non-stretchy because I haven't done it on stretchy yet, like a t-shirt fabric or something. It might work just as well, but right now I'm, I think, I'm thinking thin because where's that prototype once you put paper and mod podge on top the thickness is going to increase significantly and then if you mount something on this side of it let's say a file folder or chipboard to make a journal it's going to get even thicker so i would start with a thin fabric because of that i thought thin cotton muslin bed sheet works awesome and let's just give this a snip this is probably a poly cotton blend um, so that, well, let's hold this to ourselves. Oh, yay. I love it when it does that. It's just great. It's just dandy. Don't worry. You don't have to run off to the ironing or anything like that yet. This is all, um, it's going to be just gooped down with glue and you're probably not going to see much of this or very little. So, you know, whatever side you want to use is perfectly fine. Okay. So I think I'm going to use this side because if anything, if it does show on the inside, it will have a little bit of a relief there. Okay. So now we are going to pull in the big gun. Uh, Mod Podge. Mod Podge is a wet white glue that's used for decoupaging and uh, you can use it for a lot of things. Um, uh, you can make your own, they say, by using wet white glue and adding a little bit of water to it just so it moves a little bit easier. Uh, so if you have a bunch of Elmer's glue or something like that, um, that will work. Okay, so I grabbed 
a paintbrush. Yes, just a nice big fat paintbrush. This was the easiest, fastest way I could think to do it. I hope I hope it works well this time. You know how it goes sometimes. Okay, so I have my Mod Podge in this container. And oh, what I recommend doing is having some scraps ready. So I have, I just literally reached into my scrap -o pile and I just grabbed some scraps. So I'm gonna have those right here. For, okay, not right there, Pam. They, they need to not be on your work. Okay. And I recommend working in sections because even you're going to put down like thin to medium thickness, not super thick. You, and it's okay if you do it super thick. It's not going to ruin anything. It's just going to take longer to dry. So I would say do this in sections and then lay your paper down. Let me move everything. I'm going to get glue all over everything I can tell. Uh, but the wider, fatter, regular house style paintbrush works great for this. Um, and this one was probably even a little bit hard to begin with because I probably didn't rinse it out as well as I should have. But you want to make sure you get enough glue down so that the paper sticks. So moving at a decent clip. This one's a little messy. I will not kid you. It's a little messy, but if you're okay with that um, and you cover your area, it's okay. Yeah. Or you can just watch me be messy today. How about that? That'll work too, right? Yeah. All right. So, and, and you can just, you can lay them as is, or you can tear them to give them cool edges, whatever you like. Uh, okay. I'm just going to kind of follow my edging design here. You can always trim the edges later. That's okay. And I'll show you what to do with uh, things that don't quite get glued down the first time. Like obviously this piece is not glued. I'll show you how we'll deal with that when that time comes. I'm going to use some bigger pieces just to make some progress here, but um, this whole process will be the same if you use smaller pieces. And you could make designs with your collage. You could ink the edges, but I just want to show you the, the, the concept. So I'm not going to get super fancy with the pieces, but you can totally get super fancy with the pieces. That would be very fun. And uh, so any broken pieces of stuff, and sometimes if you have uh, brittle or dry papers, this is a great way to give them extra strength um, from the fabric underneath. And then the Mod Podge on top seals them in and then they become flowy. Let me demonstrate flowy. See flowy, oh, okay. flowy, flowy. Okay, very good. Oh, I'm doing my video. <laughs> That was a little uh, mother-in-law inter interlude there. Hello, mother-in-law Marie. <laughs> You're world famous now. <laughs> she ran back in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, she's awesome. I adore her. Okay, here we go. Um, we just had a great talk. Yep. And that was fun. So now I'll do that. Okay. Don't quite know how far my glue goes out. Maybe there. There, there, there. That's okay. All right. So let's just, I know you see this, it's curling up. We're going to handle all that at the end. Don't worry. It's going to be just fine. I know you're worried, but it's going to be just fine. It's got to find somewhere to stick this glue. Okay. There. All right. So let's go ahead and glue the rest of this. Sorry. I've got it zoomed out on big wide picture screen here, just so that we can, we can see the, the, what I'm doing. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> I can see what I'm doing. So basically I'm just going to with a big piece like this that I didn't get under, I'm just going to slap some glue down under there now. Yeah. 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 Okay. And we're carrying on over here. Make sure you go all the way to the edges. Oh, no, I'm not doing my section, am I? Okay. Let me just, let me do this middle section now. Now I'll come in here with my, uh, papers and I'll stick them down, whatever I got. Not thinking too much, just putting it down. I always figure it out later. Um, I've got a ton of paper here. Oh, I'm so happy to use up some scraps. Feels so freeing. Feels so like positive. I like, I like using the little rough edges. Of course, this ends up giving me more scraps. You know, it'd be faster if I just put them down, but you know, I just can't seem to do that. Okay. What have I got? Some writing paper. No, this is a book paper. Oh no, you know, this is wallpaper. That's what that is. Too thick. Go with the thinner paper. It's going to work better for you. Yeah. So copy paper weight is good. Thicker paper will work. It's just going to be a little bulkier uh, when you fold it and things like that. So I would say if you're going to do it, go with the like copy weight paper is a good paper. Book page paper is good paper. Um, let's see. What else do we have here? Oh, we have some, uh, yeah, just book page, like random book page. I don't know what this is. A glossary of some, some ultraviolet light book information. I think that's kind of cool. Okay. I'll just put you there. It doesn't have to go straight up and down. It doesn't have to do anything. There's no have to's here. Nope. No have to's at all. 
Um, but you just go ahead and put your design down any way you like. And that's part of the freedom of the art. You just get to play. Um, here, I've got some good old college rule. I think I'm the only person in the world that loves good old college rule, but hey, that's me. <laughs> um, all right, I got, uh, what's this? Just copy paper. Yeah, I like some more pink. And, it, and the nice thing about if you have material showing through a little bit here and there, it's okay because it's still pretty, pretty fabric. Um, and here's some good old crunchy, overcooked, um, but the lovely colors and stuff uh, are amazing with the coffee dyed paper. So I'm just going to go ahead. And can you still see? Yep. Okay. I'm just going to put the glue down on the rest of this. It'll be pretty messy. And we're coming down the home stretch for our first layer. Okay. You feel like it's not glued underneath? Just slip a little glue under there. But I will show you a trick on how to get this stuff down. Okay. Now that one's a little crunchy. She is a little crunchy. I kid you not. There's no kidding. No kidding going on here. Oh, that's that same wallpaper. Oh, I don't want that. Okay. Maybe the black one again. That was kind of cool. Maybe I have it on both sides. Okay. That's good. Almost done. Almost done. Come on, Pam. No shortage of scraps here. What's that? That looks interesting. All right. Some kind of quotes. Put you there. <laughs> I've learned that middle age is the best time of my life so far. <laughs> I like that. Um, hey, there's always hope, right? There's always hope. The good times could just be around the corner. Don't give up. Don't give up. No, nope, you're too close. Uh, yellow. Maybe this green piece. Oh, I just got a green piece there. Maybe a cream piece. Okay, here's some more yellow. I just need a little piece. Okay, there we go. Okay, now I see I have a few bare spots, so I'm just going to go in and fill my bare spots in. Oh, there's a big bare spot. Here we go. There we go. Bare spot. Bear. You are not there. Okay. So now I recommend you doing this. Maybe just uh, lift the whole project up off whatever you got stuck on just to release it a little bit and then um, yeah, lay it right back down. The, as you notice, I wanted to show you that the glue does soak through a thin fabric. So that's why you really want to have something underneath this. Okay. And then you're going to come. Oh, look, I just, I don't know. You, can, you can't see that, but I accidentally, my whole brush went and sunk into my, my Mod Podge. Okay. So I'm going to go ho and um, I'm going to go ho ho and cover everything in a, I guess, thin to medium coat. Now, if you have these, oh, let's get the whole thing covered first, and then we'll talk about how we deal with these little pieces that didn't get enough glue to begin with. Mm -hmm. Now, white glue is generally a wet white glue, okay? It usually has a um, certain component of water in it, so it's going to make your papers wrinkle. So be pre emotionally prepared for that. Things will wrinkle. I know. Why are we wanting wrinkles to happen? It's just the way Mod Podge works. Yep. This would be very difficult to do with uh, Fabrifix. <laughs> um, it just doesn't flow as easily like this. So um, that's why we're using Mod Podge. And uh, sometimes it's best to use the podge. Yeah, it is. It's a good old glue that's been around for a long time. We all remember it back in the day and it's still here. Good old workhorse glue. And, uh, but I got a trick. I got, I got, I got tricks to show you today, boy. You just hang on to your hats. It's going to be fun. So you may be able to use this, these tricks for other things. So that's why I definitely want to show them to you. I think I need a little piece there. I got a little piece here. Okay. Okay. I almost got it. Okay. Just coming down the home stretch here. You do want to cover it all because that's going to prevent cracking. And it's also going to give you your waterproof ish type surface. Okay. As long as the Mod Podge doesn't crack and usually the Mod Podge doesn't crack. Um, okay. So now I'm just, I'm going back and forth to check for peely uppies. These are things that are going to flip out. Okay. There's a little one there. What you kind of do is you drag it backwards. That puts the glue underneath it and then you carry forwards. Like there's another one. Oh, how well you can see we're probably too far away for you to see that. Um, let's see if I get any others to flick up. See, there's some here that, so what I'm doing is I'm seeing where it's lifting. Like, let me show you here. 
it was a little, it's lifting. So I'm going against the grain to, and that oozes some glue under it. And then I'm pulling it this way to smoosh it down. So this builds up glue under it. Okay. And then smooshing it down. Yeah. Okay. So that was, that was basically trick number one, uh, to get those little, uh, side flaps. So, and, and you kind of got to watch it for a little bit to see what it does because as it dries and buckles, it's going to lift away from the fabric below where there wasn't enough glue to hold it down. And sometimes you have like a little weird piece that just wants to do weird things. So, so sometimes you come in with a, what I call the save. <laughs> you just put a patch on. That's right. All right. So rule number 47, when you don't know what to do, you cover it. There we go. Crafters Bible rule book, log book, save, save of the day, right? Okay. Let me back up a bit again so you can see the whole enchilada. Here we go. And put that down, put that down, down, down. Now it might, it, you might get a wrinkle. It might fold back, but then you whip it back and, oh, what was that? Oh, there, that's nice. That's the journal I'm working on. Hold on. <laughs> I'm, I'm right here. <laughs> That's what happens when you're working in a little confined space. <laughs> I had to put all my stuff in here recently. Okay. There, that check, double checking, double checking. If I have any question, I do the same technique. Double checking a little bit there, come back, fold it over. And you are going to get wrinkles, like I said. So just be emotionally prepared for that. So, okay. Wrinkles are our friends in certain places and times. That's right. Or maybe always. <laughs> okay. So now, uh, it's a very good idea to have a little bag or plastic wrap or something. If you're not quite done with your, your brush to go ahead and put it in there and snap tie it or click it so that there's no air. And then that'll, you don't have to run and wash your brush immediately. You can do what you're doing. Okay. So then the next thing you want to do is um, probably take this outside to let it air dry. And this is what happened to me. I'll tell you. And cause I don't want it to happen to you, but it could happen to you. So here's my, Oh, here's my prototype. And I, I took the, the whole thing. I took the wax paper and everything and I lifted it up and I took it outside and I put it in the sun to dry. And then a gust of wind came along and it did this. Yeah. And then I had to peel it apart because the Mod Podge started sticking together. So just make sure that it's tacked down on the corners where it's not going to be blown by the wind to glue to itself. Cause it will glue to itself cause it is glue. Okay. So then the other thing is um, see how maybe we need a little more glue here. Huh? Of course I put my, my glue thing away. Oh, it's all right. I got the Mod Podge right here, right here. And I got a finger so I can glue that. All right, there we go. We're all glued down again. Okay. I would free it from its, um, wax paper because it will glue. It, it's not that hard to get off cause it's wax paper. Um, but whatever it is, if you're on cardboard, if you're on a shower curtain, if whatever your protective layer is underneath, do your best to free it from that. Now you can still go ahead and lay this down back on this, but it's not going to be adhered to it. So I'm going to go do that right now. I'm going to take this and I'm going to go put it outside. I'll be right back. Okay. We're recording. Yes. Okay. So now let's pretend that this is the one I brought in from outside. Okay. And uh, I have peeled it off. It's totally dry, but it's totally flexible, which is kind of cool because it's a cloth now because it has been collaged. It's a collaged cloth basically. Um, so now what you want to do is iron it. And why do I want to iron it? I want to iron it because remember I told you the paper's going to wrinkle. You're going to get lots of this wavies and bubblies and crunklies, and it's going to feel very rough to your hands. If you want to have that nice smoothy glass sort of feeling as glassy as glass can get with like with this stuff, this is the trick. Okay. Um, you're going to iron it. Do not iron on your craft mat. It will warp it. Go ahead and get some kind of makeshift, either use a, like a wooden cutting board, or if you have one of these little gizmos that you get at the Goodwill, um, a little table iron works great here. So you just take your stuff, you put it down and then you have, why do I never have anything where I need it? Why, what is that with me? Ugh. There's like one thing. I, hang on. I got to go look for it. Okay. I'm borrowing another one I had sitting here. This one will work just fine. Okay. Basically a, a, a thin tea towel. I'm using a flower sack tea towel from, um, obviously I was color dyeing with this. So excuse if it has splotches on it, but it's just a, you could actually use another piece of bed sheet if you don't have anything else. Um, but this is flower sack 
material. Um, it's a tea towel I got at Walmart in like five or 10 packs or eight packs or something like that. Um, not very expensive, but like I said, if you don't have this, just tear up another piece of bed sheet and use that as your go-between. What we are going to do, how do I turn this iron back on? Nope, it's off. Okay, so let's see. I'll, I'll, I gotta, I gotta, see it's an auto off. So it went auto off and I don't know how to on it again. So I'm just gonna try, try and fool it by unplugging it. So there, it thinks that there, she's done ironing. Oh no, wait, she wants to iron some more because she just plugged me back in. And this thing heats up pretty fast. You probably want to use a separate crafting iron for, um, yeah, it's getting hot. Um, if you're anything like me, um, I will, I do get glue on my iron. I get everything that I'm not supposed to get on my iron. So I bought a dedicated crafting iron. Um, my original one, which worked fine. Um, I bought it at Walmart for like six or $7. It was just a tiny iron, but it worked great. And so I'm ironing now. Okay. Here I'm ironing right through the uh, stuff. I'm going to keep moving. I would say low to medium heat. That just sounds like a safe thing to do, but honestly, when I'm on my own, I probably do it at a, at a higher heat and I just keep checking quickly. Now it's okay if it sticks like that because it's going to peel off very easily. Okay. Just want you to know, don't worry. It's going to be okay. But as you're going to do this, you're going to all of a sudden feel all those lumps and bumps are going to wilt before your eyes and be, um, become nice and smooth. And you're going to have a very nice um, book cloth to work with. It's going to be really cool. And just think of the, you know, imaginative things. If you had really, you know, took your time and you could do designs and stuff like that with your collage and all your stamping. Now, here's the thing. If you're going to do designs with your collage and then stamping, remember, if you go over with Mod Podge, Mod Podge has water in it. So if you're using inks that are not waterproof, like Stazon or whatever the other one is, can't think of it, um, uh, archival inks, uh, if you're not using those, then your stamps might smudge. But what you can use after or before are stickers. And maybe we'll play with some of that to see what that looks like. Because um, they will not smudge. Okay. So now I got the first half. It's all, ooh, it's really, I wish you could feel it because that's the best way to tell. But it just, it just, it, it just really feels like, like a leather almost, like a pleather. Yeah, let, give me a pleather. Can anybody say, you give me a pleather? Yeah, that's what it feels like. Um, so I'll just do the bottom half here. Okay. I'm just going to go along here and do this, give it some heat. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the back. You will find that some of the glue did ooze through. So the back surface might not, even though it's material, it might not be as pretty as you want it to be because of glue seepage. So uh, remember here, you don't want to run over where you glued because that will get stuck to your, your surface there. See how it sticks a little bit? It comes right off. Yeah. And there's no imprint from the um, flower cloth on here. It's just all smooth. Like it just melted it. Yeah. It's just like melted it like candy. Okay. I'm going to flip it over and here I have the back side. It has a few wrinkles in it as well. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to come along with my, uh, iron, my very fancy iron and which I also got from, Oh, I, I don't know if I finished telling that story. I, yeah, I couldn't find my little uh, 6 or $7 Walmart one, so I decided to go into Walmart, and this was like post-COVID, so there's nothing on the shelves that time, and uh, um, it was just actually a few weeks ago, and uh, so it's amazing how little um, product is around now. Have you noticed that? Um, I don't know, maybe I just haven't been in the stores in so long, but um, I am wrink uh, ironing out the wrinkles in the back cloth just to give it a little more smoothage, because we like smoothage. And I would say, even though this is fabric, it does have glue ooze through it. So don't iron right on it. Keep, just be safe with your iron and uh, just do this. And a little firm hand pressure helps um, remove the wrinkles a little faster if you're so inclined. Not necessary. There. So, I mean, it's not perfectly wrinkle free, but it is, it is really nice, you know? Okay. So basically, there you go. That's, that's what you have. And you can cut it to size um, very easily. You can also, when, it, when you get it cut to size, you can go ahead and sew around the edges to give it a nice finished look, or you can do a wrap around and maybe we'll do, what time is it? 24? Okay. Oh, okay. We'll do a fast example of something that you can make from this. Okay. Let me move my Mod Podge before there's a Mod Podge disaster. Okay. What I thought we could do was move the ironing board. Where's my ironing board crew? Oh yeah, that's me. Here, move that. Okay. Okay. 
All right, there we go. One quick look at Sonny. He's just fine. Okay, he's just fine. All right, and um, I thought we would maybe make something out of this beautiful handmade book cloth that we just made and a file folder. And a manila file folder, the nice thing about a lot of these is they have, oh, let me zoom in here for you. They have, I like that good lighting. Where's my lighting? <laughs> Oh, details, man. You really, really need to pay attention to the details. Okay, is there a light there? Okay. Um, there is uh, two score lines here already made for you in case you have a lot of fat stuff to put in here. But that makes a nice, what? Spine. That's right. So it, like you just already have an Insta spine. So look at that. Look at that. I got, I got Insta spine just because I'm using a file folder. Why is there glue here? Oh, it's probably from something I spilled because this was bone dry but i have managed i have managed to uh make it gluey again <laughs> it doesn't surprise me one bit but i have built a spine did you see how i did that there was already score lines here the one natural fold it comes with but then there's two little baby score lines so you got yourself a spine okay if you wanted a spine okay you don't have to have a spine but um okay it's dry now um uh, flip it over so this is the side we're going to be gluing it onto. We have to decide how tall and all that. So let me do maybe a standard, um, let's just do a nine by six. Okay. Hang on. I'm just going to cut this. Well, oh, you want to see it? You want to see me cut it? Okay. I heard you. I heard you. Okay. Well, first of all, I could just measure it. Okay. I know. I know those evil words. Don't I? But this, you know, when you're trying for nine by six, I don't know how you avoid measuring it, but I do my best. I do my best. So whatever size you're gonna you make of a book, you wanna make this a couple inches taller and wider so that you have enough to fold over if you're gonna do the old fold over method. Um, okay. And now we have to take into account something here. I have a spine, so I'm gonna do one at a time. That's probably smarter. Yeah, because if I do them at the same time, it won't take into account the spine. It'll be disaster pants. So can you see? I'm gonna look in a second, hang on. I'm just gonna line it up. Nine. I do not line up there. Okay. Just have cut something off this at one point already because it's kind of weird. It must've been a big one and I changed the, uh, the I lopped off an end. That must've been what happened. All right, so where is it? Let's go to six. Six is there, six is there. Where do I find, uh, am I recording? Yes, a, uh, no, no. We were doing one at a time, why are you there now? Oh, ah, you fooled me, you fooled me. You were going to try and get cut and be the wrong length. I'm on to you. Okay, my top is the right length. Let's just go with the 12. Okay, I'm gonna open this. Come over to the six. Mm -hmm. I notice I flip my ruler over so I can get really flush. You don't have to do that, but I, I, I don't know, I did. Okay, and now I want this side to also be six. All right. Put the spine there. Okay. Okay, I'll flip it over. You can actually do it like this too. It's more if you're tearing, you wanna flip it over or else it's gonna not tear right. Not as cleanly. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, there we go. And I need to take into account the height. So we want my book to be nine tall. Why do I pick nine by six? It's probably the easiest measurement when you fold an eight and a half by 11 paper in here. It just fits so nicely and easily and you don't have to do any trimming. And uh, usually we're working with copy weight or copy paper, and that's classically eight and a half by 11 here in America. Um, so it's just easier, fewer cuts. Okay, always retract. Do we get it straight? Not bad, not bad. So we have a little book. Are you all over the place? Okay. Um, and now let's go ahead and adhere this to our book page, our book cloth. I think we're just going to do the old, I should really turn my iron off. Let me turn that off. Okay. I'm turning it off. I'm turning it off. I am. Ah. Okay. Oh, there goes the light. Hold on. Hold on, Sally. 
Okay, it's all right. Everything's fine. Sunshine, relax. I know it looks like mother's running around like a chicken with her head cut off, but there we go. Okay. And now we are back at the craft station and all is well. And we will now be performing the gluing of the file folder to the book cloth we have just made. Okay. So I'm going to use a Fabrifix glue, fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, paper to paper. If you've never used it, clear silicone glue is great stuff. And okay. And I, you really don't need to sew any of this project, but I might do some sewing out because I think it might look kind of cool and it might give us that little extra bit of seal. Um, but if you really want to just glue it, just go to the edges very well and make sure you don't miss any areas and stuff like that. Get enough glue down so that when you're ready to glue it, it's going to grab. Okay. All right. There we go. And it's not going to soak through, so I don't need to finger smoosh it. Let's try here. Now what I'm doing is I'm positioning it. I'm using the pattern to actually help guide me where I want it. Um, so it's kind of a straight band here. Hand ironing, hand ironing. You can use a brayer if you want. This is a brayer if you've never seen a brayer, but basically it's like a, a mini rolling pin for printers. Um, but you can do one of these deals. If you want to come in here and do that, that's fine. That's fine. You don't have to. Just a little excess. Um, but now we're just going to trim off what we're not going to use. So I'd say I'd like to go to over maybe at least an inch. Can you see? Yep. Remember, you can't bring it back, so give yourself a little extra if you're unsure. Okay. And that cuts pretty easily through that. That doesn't look straight, you know? This doesn't look straight. That's really weird. I don't know why that happened. Oh, well. We'll just roll with it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to come off about an inch. Yep, that's definitely not straight, but this might be thick enough to to hide that little bluebird that I did. Okay, so we're pretty good there. Maybe just cut off these rough edges. It cuts very easily. And down here, which is a little hangover here, we'll just get rid of that. I'm not dealing with any of that nonsense, no. And we're retracting. And then, so what does it look like? It looks like that so far. Okay, now. Um, we want to go ahead and uh, turn our corners in. Uh, some people like to cut stuff out here. Not a big fan of that, but this is like the thickness of wallpaper, I would say at this point. It feels like wallpaper, maybe a little thicker. So, I, you know, if you want to go ahead and, and cut those corners off, that's, that's totally fine. But I think I might try and sew mine down just to see what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we have a little infraction here. You know what we're going to do? We're just going to glue that down. That's what we're going to do. Here, I'm going to take some fabric fix since it's here. My Mod Podge is already closed. Big lazy pants, right? I know, I know. You could Mod Podge it too, but uh, it just needs to be stuck down. It's no biggie. No biggie. No biggie. We're not going to let that stop our fun. No. All right. Now, we're going to go ahead and glue all the way around and let's put some glue down. Okay, put, in, put some glue here first. Now this is a little thicker. Like I said, start with a thin material. If you start with thick material, this is gonna get thicker really fast. So you don't wanna do that. But this is gonna give you the structure of your cover. So the thickness given to you by the Mod Podge, the material and the file folder will now give you a very nice thickness. Now, if you had a bone folder handy right at this moment, that would be totally awesome because then you could come along and do this squash maneuver giving you nice, crisp, super crisp edges, like nobody's business. And then you come along, you do the same thing on the other side. Okay, here we go. A little bit of glue. I'm using a little more here than usual because this is a little bit of a stiff, stiff cover. Kind of reminds me of those school book covers we used to make back in the day when we had to cover our textbooks in little school, you know. Okay, everybody, today we're covering a textbook. It's day one because we're going to use these same lousy textbooks for the next 40 years. So we have to save them and beautify them. Right. And then they, of course, got a new textbook the next year. And there you go. Yep, that's what happened. <laughs> but we knew how to cover a book. You know what I mean? <laughs> Remember the paper bag covering? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's actually what we did. Yeah. Back in Canada, we covered it with paper bags. Um, yeah. 
It's high rent district. <laughs> All right, here we go. It worked well. Yep, did fine. Probably had lousy glue to work with though. Okay, since this is where I goofed it, I'm gonna have to make sure I go straight across the top. Kind of, it's so thick that you're not even gonna notice that my uh, really bad cutting there. So there you go. That's another way, a little crafter way out of a little fix. You just keep going to see if it really makes a difference in the long run, because it might not. It just might not. So don't worry about fuss fussing too much. Okay, get those corners nice and down. Got one more, bringing it home. Bring it home. This is fun. I mean, you could you could do so many things with this stuff. Yeah, I'm just telling you, you could make envelopes and pockets and file folders and happy mail things. I mean, just you could just really go to town. And uh, things for stocking, stuffing, and uh, Christmas making. And, you know, you could use uh, papers related. Like, what if you used, like, children's books to cover something? You know, collage material. Huh? How about that? That would look really cool. Or, like, a Christmas-themed something. You know, that would be neat. Like, wrapping paper. Oh, my God. Just torn up Christmas wrapping paper and making a cover out of it like this. That would be so cool. Why didn't I think of that? Where was that thought 10 minutes ago, Pam? Not nowhere to be found here. Sorry. Okay. It's a little lumpy on the corners, but not bad. Honestly, in my world, not bad. But if you have, um, you like to get not perfectly like lump free. I mean, those are the size of the lumps. I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah, that's okay. There's my lumps. There's my, I'm showing my lumps. Mm -hmm. Now we want to train our paper to receive the um, spine folds. So we're just going to remember paper doesn't like to stretch, but when you uh, glue it to fabric and then you mod podge it, it has no choice. That's right. It almost, it, it's just like comes a different substance. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Folding that fold just so it knows what it's doing. It's like, wait, what, what are we doing here? Wait, I thought I was just like a book cloth. I mean, what, what I'm folding now? What are, you, what are you doing to me? I have a spine? I have a spine. You have a spine. You have a spine. A nice crisp spine will always serve you well. So go ahead and do it with your bone folder. And like, no cracks, no nothing. Okay. Now, am I saying this will never crack? I don't know. It's only a couple minutes old. So, and it's the first time I've done this. So I have no frame of reference, but it, it feels really smooth. That's all I can tell you. Smooth as a goose. Mm -hmm. Smooth as a goose. It looks Wrink Let me show you up close. It looks wrinklier than it feels. Yeah. Oh, I'm telling you. It, that feels smooth. I don't know how to describe it. It feels smooth. I can see the wrinkles, but it feels smooth. There you go. Did I turn something off? No, it's still recording. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. All right. So here we go. Everything is glued down. Working good. We have something that looks like a book. Now, the easiest way to do with this part if you're just like, you know, oh, let me back up, making something for fun, no big deal, that kind of stuff. Hold on. What I would normally do is put a piece of Tyvek tape down the center to reinforce the spine. But this spine is already very strong because it has material, it has Mod Podge, it has paper, and you really don't need a lot more than that. But um, I would probably use Tyvek tape because I bought a ton of it and I really like it. But uh, you can also use uh, Scotch uh, masking tape if you want. It'll work just fine. Um, doesn't always have to be this highfalutin, you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be highfalutin. Okay. Oh yeah, this is great stuff, isn't it? Okay. Is it long enough? No, we'll just, we'll make it work. Okay. Just put this in the center here because this is going to be covered. So that'll be okay. All right. Now, um, and let, let's re again, make our spine folds, retraining spine folds because we have added a new substance. That part's really overkill, but I just want to show you how you can reinforce it if you have concerns. And I know there are concerns out there because I've heard, I've, heard, I've heard your comments. I'm concerned. It's going to fall apart. I'm concerned. My book spine won't hold. This is how you reinforce the book spine. Now, if you really want to keep, keep even going more, you can do this. But let me show you how to cover these panels easily, quickly, and just for fun. 